Now, it's interesting that a lot of people don't understand what goes into declaring a day of total fire ban. And indeed, it's a really tricky affair because we get cop some criticism at times for when we call a total fire ban, particularly on the back of we've had a, a fair amount of rain in the last particular the last couple of days, particularly south of the, of the divide. So what we do is the Bureau of Meteorology put out their fire weather forecasts and the fire weather forecast is on the total fire ban districts and for seven of those districts or a good portion of those they hit the severe mark. Now so that's really a trigger for us to say okay we need to have a look at it. Now in severe uh, it means that the fire danger indexes are up, it means the temperature's up, it means tomorrow in particular it's a, it's a wind event. And albeit we know the forests aren't too bad, we have a very close look at the fire danger index in the grasslands. So tomorrow, for a total fire ban, we believe that there'll be strong winds, there'll be temperatures up, and then we go and consult. So we, I've already spoken now to the ACOs. Uh, the ACOs will tap into their network as well to get the grass, so it's no good me sitting here at headquarters making that call. I want the field to give me their advice about what they feel should be done, should we call it or shouldn't we call it. And indeed, sometimes the ACOs will go further into the field to seek advice from uh, brigade members, from other organisations and the like. So we'll consult quite, uh, quite strongly. Then at about 3.30, we sit down with a teleconference with all the key players in the room and we get a full briefing from the Bureau. Are your forecasts on track for tomorrow? Is the wind going to be up? Is the temperature going to be up? We have a look at the curing rate. How, how dry is the, uh, is the grasslands? How much moisture is still in the ground? Now, even though there's some moisture in the ground, the grass is dry. We believe that the fire will still be carried strongly by the wind. And I've got to tell you, as a result, the advice of all that, you put that together. So the science that we get from, from our uh, grassland curing people, the science we get from the Bureau of Meteorology, the consultation we have with the other agencies, the consultation we have with the ACOs, you put all that together, and then we then still may go, look, it's 100% Mallee, 100% Wimmera, 100% Southwest. We're not really sure about Central. And Central's a really interesting one because we'll go, look, the west of Central, we're really worried about the grasslands out on that western side of Melbourne. But let's face it, the east side's not really an issue. It pushes into Gippsland. So you then have a bit of a debate about central, do we do it, do we don't do it? And, and, and that could go either way. So that's essentially uh, how we've been calling a total fire ban. I think we can do it a little bit better next year. I think we can put a little bit more science into it and there's more data that we can get. So we'll continue to refine that. But we treat it as a very important call because we understand the implications that a total fire ban has on people that want to build and weld and continue construction. That has an implication on the education system, the health system. It really impacts our whole society. So we take it, take it very, very seriously. And that's why we take the time and effort into understanding uh, before we actually call a total fire mandate. Total fire bans, that's how we do it. Have a good day.